Yeah, no, it's fine. It's just, I, it's just, we, I come past, give you a thumbs up, we quite stop, then we swap over from there. Okay. So, uh, oh, right. all right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so the first thing that I've noticed, mm -hmm. have you ever done off-road, off-road off riding? Not much. Motocross? No. The reason I ask is, yeah. because you're counterbalancing the bike, oh. i.e., you're putting the bike into the corner, mm -hmm. but you're sitting upright. Right, okay. <laughs> That has the opposite effect of yeah. what you want a bike to do. <laughs> if you do that, mm -hmm. then do that, the bike wants to do that. Yeah, right. So not. what 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 try and do is mm -hmm. if you're going around a corner, mm -hmm. look at where the court as far around as you can see, yeah, yeah, okay. look to where you want to go mm -hmm. because it'll make you like dip the your shoulder in. Yeah, right. So um, focus on the that at the apex of the corner. So yeah, you're looking so the apex mm -hmm. is like when you're going around the corner, it's the point that's nearest to the curve, yeah. right in the middle. Yeah. But what we're trying to do is, on the left-hand bend, mm -hmm. you're going around the left-hand bend yeah. to the right-hand side of your lane. Yeah. But to make sure that you don't counterbalance the bike, mm. so the bike needs to be over, but you basically need to sit at the same angle that the bike is at. Right, yeah. Because yeah. the bike's doing this, yeah. and you're then doing that. Yeah and that will sit the bike up. Yeah. So try and, mm -hmm. so counter steering yeah. is how we steer. You heard of counter steering? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So counter steering is where you turn the handlebar the opposite way to where you to want to go. Yeah. And it will drop the bike in. Yeah. So if you try and do it, when you go around left hand bend, instead of steering around, mm -hmm. if you steer it that way, it will drop the yeah. shoulder in and then it'll help you lean over mm -hmm. and it'll get you around the bend yeah, a bit better. So counter steering and just So counter steering, so turn the opposite way you want to go. Mm -hmm. You can try it in a straight line and see yeah. how it works. <laughs> so when you're in a straight line, yeah. if you push the left handlebar very slightly, mm -hmm. it will drop the bike in and it will make you go over that side. Yeah. If you do it that way, it'll, it'll go that right. way. Yeah. Yeah. So for left hand bend, so you want to go the opposite right. way that yeah. you want to go. Yeah, yeah. Just initially, and then it pulls in. And, and, and yeah, it will it will roll in. The yeah. bike will be in the corner. Yeah. But try not to let your body sit upright. Yeah. You yeah. need to let your body go with, with the it. bike. Yeah. And it will get around the bend. Right. Yeah. Don't worry too much mm -hmm. about your position of getting left and right mm. in the bends. Okay. Work on that first of all, yeah. and then we'll work on the position. Right after yeah so the okay. counter steering yeah so oh. counter steering left hand bend opposite way then, and it will dip your shoulder into the bend that you want to go into mm -hmm. and you'll be able to get around a lot smoother yeah. does that make sense yeah, yeah definitely cool i wasn't actively thinking about that before so just like <laughs> no but I guess that, that was the first thing that i noticed yeah. is off one as a couple of our lads that yeah. did it on their courses uh -huh. They exactly the same thing. They sit as the bike goes in. They were sitting upright, yeah. and then got them to change yeah. the way they ride, and they do it naturally. From that, okay. it only take a little while, Thinking, yeah. and you'll naturally start doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, nice. You. So uh, you're going to lead out of here. Okay. So we're going up to this roundabout. It's not really a roundabout <laughs> because it's it's strange. It's, it's strange. But we're following the A24. To Worthen Horsham. Yep. If you stay in the left hand lane, you've got a juncture on the left hand side as you come to the roundabout. Yep. As you start to go around, there's another single carriageway off at 11 o'clock, yep. but we want to go off at 1 o'clock yep. and you'll see it, it's a dual carriageway. Yep. So yep. as you get, as you're starting yep. to go around, you'll see it, it's over there, yep. it's a dual carriageway with national speed limit side. You've actually come into familiar territory for me. Yeah. Right, okay, great. Yeah, so yeah. that's the way that we're going. It's near on. Rikers here, isn't it? We always we've stop here by Rikers. Rikers. Yeah. In yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's the way we're going.
really good. I've never heard of the Brady before, so I've never heard of the Brady right. as well. So what will happen is though, by extending, by setting the bike up, or by you setting up to extend your view, I'll work on your position separately okay. to enable you to do that, yeah. but maintain the stability on the bike by leaning against it, you're unstabilising it, and the bike will want to sit up. Yeah. And if it does it in a corner, that's where the issues will arise. So to counteract that, where you're leaning into a corner, you're going to have to stay like that. Yeah. Right, so the bike will stay like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because what you did on one corner, we came down to a corner in the feed shop on the other side, it was solid white lines and the bend looked quite sharp and you broke for it. But the speed you were doing was fine because we work off certain information about how sharp a corner is for us. The first thing is paint and signs. Yeah. So these markers here, these lines, the long, the long lines with small gaps in between them are called hazard divide lines. If you've got a small line with a, gip, a big gap between them, there's not too many hazards. Got it. Yeah. So the way that we look at it, more paint, more danger. Yeah. And then you'll incorporate it with signs, a slow sign, chevron boards, and a bend sign as well, with solid white lines says, this corner could be quite tricky. If we can't physically see where that corner goes, because it's high hedges and stuff like that, so all you've got is trees and hedges around you, other information that you can work on is how fast are the cars coming around that corner towards you, for one. Because if they come around at a pace, actually, it might not be as quick as I think it is. But the, the guaranteed thing that you'd work off in, have you heard of something called the limit point? No. Right, the limit point is where that curve meets this curve on a bend. Mm -hmm. So, on a, even on a straight road, limit points will still meet. <laughs> They'll be like that. On a bend, they'll be it'll be like that. <laughs> if that limit point is moving towards you as you're approaching the bend, your start. speed is too quick for the bend. Yeah. So you'd come down a gear if need be, you'd apply a little bit of brake and then you'd change gear once the limit point stops moving towards you. Yeah. So if that limit point is travelling at the same speed that you are, at that given time, you're doing the right speed for the bend. Because the limit point isn't coming towards you, it's not moving away. It's staying where it is. If the limit point is moving away from you, so you're seeing more of the road surface, you know that you can put a little bit more throttle on, depending on the speed limit, but you can put a little bit more throttle on because the bend is either straightening out or it's just not a tight bend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the way the way that we work it is you need to be if you have read a bend correctly, you'll be coming out of it, depending on the speed limit, quicker than you went into it. Mm. On a national speed limit road you might go into a bend at 40. If you've read it right, you'll be coming out of it at 50, mm. 55 or 60. Mm. Okay? Mm. So what that then feeds to is your position in the road. So for a left-hand bend, road craft, as we call, we go off, you want to be to the right-hand side of your lane for a left-hand bend. Because the further you are over there, the more it will give you vision around the corner. So if you've got a 90 degree bend, if you're to the left-hand side of it, you can basically see that much of the corner. If you're here, you can now see that much of the corner. So you've gained 10 meters, for argument's sake, purely by being over to the right-hand yeah. side of your lane. Mm -hmm. So that will counteract you needing to put your head upright so you can yeah. see around the corner because you'll be in the right position to extend your view anyway by being further over. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. From now on, I'm going to be riding in the position where I will ride in my daily role as an advanced police motorcyclist. So, if you want to follow my line, that's absolutely fine, but don't go outside of your safety margins. If when you're getting there you think, I don't quite like this, because that little voice in your head is speaking to you, go as far as you are comfortable and then build on that little bit by little bit. Don't try and jump straight in, work on it. And what you'd be doing is, 
I'm driving down straight road. I can see ahead of me that the bend is going round to the left. So at an early stage, I've picked up, it's a left-hand bend. <laughs> I'm going to move over towards the centre of the, of the centre line on my side of the road. I'm now in the right position for that bend. The next thing I'm going to work on is how fast is that bend? So I'm going to take in information, the paint, the signs. Can I see the bend? Can I see cars coming towards me through the trees? How fast are they coming around? All those little bits are telling me how fast that corner is, but the overriding factor is the limit point. Yeah. So on the approach to that, I'm over to the right-hand side for a left-hand corner. The limit point isn't moving, it's going around. I'm on the money, I'm in the right position. I've got a nice extended view. The corner isn't running away from me, isn't coming closer. <laughs> Everything's happy. <laughs> as I'm going around the bend, I'm looking as far around as I can. As I can. I'm not looking at the little bit of road in front of me, <laughs> because where you look, your mind will steer you. I.e., yeah, you see a pothole, you stare at it. What happens? <laughs> you hit a pothole. <laughs> Today, yeah, there was one manhole cover. I went, don't hit that. And I looked at it, of course, went into that's it. called target fixation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you look at something, that's why identify it, move early, mm -hmm. and then look to where you want to be going and ignore what's there. And that's what you should be doing with the corner, not looking at the corner, the bit you're doing. You should be looking okay. where I'm exiting, yeah. trying to work out where it goes. You'll get around the bend more safely then. Make sense. So, what I want you to both to work on now is just if it's a right hand bend, move to the left. If it's a left hand bend, move to the right. And then we'll start. We'll start finessing the actual position of it. So, go with the bike. Don't sit your head up. As in, when you go around the corner, do that. Mm -hmm. What I do is, I'll go into the corner, but I will still have my head up, but because I've moved further over, I've actually, I've, I could see it anyway. Mm -hmm. My body is still leaning the bike over, because that's what you need to do. You need to get your weight over the body, uh, over the bike, to get it around the bend. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so what I want you to do this time, how did you get on with the counter steering? Yeah, I think um, for me it was fine. I think uh, it helps when the more speed you have for me. Yeah. So I felt like I was kind of maybe trying to overdo it initially. It's slower. a little bit of fault it's, on, yeah. on a 40 limit road, yeah. but as long as you've got the general idea yeah, that if you, you push to, on the left handlebar, it. You it don't will want to be the bike sitting in. up straight yeah, like yeah. that. And, and then you don't <laughs> need to sit no. upright. Yeah. So just counter steer it yeah, in with the bike just dip your shoulder in yeah, towards it doing. and then look where you're that. going yeah. it will be easier yeah. on a higher speed corner but it still it helps natural. i could see when as soon as you when you emphasize the shoulder yeah. leaning it it all goes so and, it all, and, it, and it will make it a lot safer yeah. for you like i say if you're trying to sit upright when you've got to put the bike in the bend <laughs> the bike is saying this ain't yeah. right it's like when you've got a pillion yeah, yeah. and you're going yeah. at the corner and the pillion uh, sits upright yeah, to have a look where they're going yeah, you feel the bike go with them yeah. And you do, you're doing exactly the same thing by yeah. doing it yourself. Yeah. So counter steer it, lean into the bend, look as look your exit point for the bend. Mm -hmm. But early position, get the right speed, limit point. then everything else was happy. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we'll do that section of road again mm -hmm. where you can lead it this time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so up to the roundabout, all the way around the roundabout, and we're going back down. Mm -hmm. And what we did, let's get around get the other roundabout, other roundabout yeah. and, come, and we'll stop in this okay. lay-by yeah. again. Fine. Okay? Yeah. So just work on the counter steering mm -hmm. and sort of getting in a nice early position for that bend. Yeah. Yeah. And after we've done this bit, then we'll move on to some, some higher speed yeah. roads yeah. with some bends that it will make it feel Bit's easier. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right then. Cool. Yeah, so I'm leading up. Okay. and as the bend straightens out then move because what you're doing is coming across late but then bouncing off the corner and saving the corner again. So you're 
is coming back out on the near side, back out to the middle of the lap. So you need to stay over and hold that line all the way round. Yeah? Just be mindful yeah. when you're following vehicles. Yeah. If you can't overtake it, you can't progress, but. the safest thing to do is drop away from it. Because yeah. um, a couple of times you had a little dab on the brake yeah. behind that Volvo. Because yeah. you're so close to it, when he braked, you had to react to yeah. it. Whereas if you sit about where I am, yeah. back, no yeah. one can overtake you because yeah. of the speed limit. Yeah. And it makes you that much more comfortable because you're sat there, you can see loads. And when they break, all you've got to do is just roll off the throttle yeah. and then you've got your safety margin. Yeah. We have, there's, there's two distances, there's the following distance and the overtaking distance. Right. The following is, if you're not doing anything and you're minding your own business, yeah. you need to be sort of like, say, here to that tree away from it. Mm -hmm. You're nice and safe, you're away from it and the world's a happy place. Yeah. The overtaking is where you'll move up and that's the overtaking distance mm -hmm. is because you need to close the gap because you want to get by something yeah. so you've moved up to it ready to do the overtake you're out you're gone you're back in again yeah. they're the two distances following position overtaking position yeah, okay yes i saw you working on your position yeah, trying to get over for the bends and stuff but you're still sitting you're still sitting upright no, so no. literally be rigid on the bike yeah. when the bike starts to go, just, go. just just go with it Bit of it to, bit try <laughs> try not yeah. try not to sit up and go the other way because it will it will make it more difficult for you yeah, to get around the corner yeah. okay yeah. Yeah. follow my line on this one mm -hmm. and you'll see where i'm sitting mm -hmm. and then you'll see what i'm doing yeah because i'm now riding in the right position mm -hmm. and then you can work off of that just right. to get some ideas yeah. okay if you're leaning over to the left you're away from the cars that are coming round there anyway. Yeah. If you're in that position and you're leaning to the right for a right hand bend and you're there, oh. then your upper body is on the opposing carriageway. You're going to come into conflict. Yeah. But if your bike is up to the white line, but you're leaning that way, you're in essence nowhere different to where a car would be. Yeah? Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so you're now leading, yeah. you're now following. Mm -hmm. Good riding, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> it's a nice day. It started to, it was gonna, it tried to rain a bit, but it stopped, thank God. <laughs> <coughs> All right? Yeah. Feels very naughty overtaking things, the police bike behind <laughs> That felt odd. It did, but you only got up to about 67. So when the cars are doing like 44, 45, 46, we're not we're not banging past them yeah um and it's we're not sort of like causing other people to react to what we're doing yeah. either so yeah. um like i say if something's doing 45 48 miles an hour it's just going to completely restrict what you're doing yeah and then you're going to get a build up of traffic and then you're going to get people who are going to start wanting to overtake yeah so the better thing to do is to clear the hazard and get past it, mm -hmm. okay?